This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. All right, we get to Nate Olson uh, from scorebooklive.com covering all things high school athletics in the great state of Arkansas. Not just football, because they're covering all the stuff. And, uh, Nate, we're, uh, we've changed the day that we're having Nate on the show now from Tuesdays to Thursdays, and that seems to make some sense, you know, because, well, well Nate, the games are tomorrow. So I thought that made a little more sense, don't you? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good call, a good audible at the line of scrimmage. It's a good, that's, yeah, that, that'll be good. And we'll, we'll focus more on the games that will happen tomorrow. We'll, we'll talk about some, some games previously to uh, note, but uh, especially if a team is not playing a, a bigger game the week before, or, you know, that next day, and we want to kind of revisit things. So it'll, it'll be a little bit in flux, but I like it um, the night be- or the day before, you know, a, a slate of big games. No doubt it'll be a good move. Okay. Well, if you think it's good, then I'm going to think it's good as well. And it looks like we've got yeah. a pretty interesting matchup uh, with uh, Bentonville West taking on Fayetteville uh, in Fayetteville tomorrow night. And you wrote about, you wrote about, well, first of all, you wrote about Gino Bell's son. And I shouldn't put it in those terms because he's got his, his own name and it's Nick. And Nick yeah. Bell is, uh, uh, Gino talked quite about, uh, quite a lot about Nick off the air last year while we would sit there in the booth or uh, getting ready for the pregame show. And he's very proud of his son. They play different positions, different sized men, uh, but a pretty talented kid nonetheless. He is, and, and I want to give credit where it's due. Steve Andrews, who was actually my boss about 20 years ago, um, he's a, a major contributor for us uh, in Northwest Arkansas. Steve does an awesome job. He's former sports editor at two or three different places, and he's a freelancer in the Fayetteville area and really enjoy the stuff he comes up with. I, I thought he had some really good nuggets from Gino about um, Nick off the field. I mean, Nick Nick is a great defensive back, probably underrated. A lot of people don't know a lot about him. He, he has scoop and score for a long touchdown in the game uh, against the Booker T. Washington early in the year, the first game. And like you said, he's a DB. He's a smaller guy. He's really fast. Uh, I, I think some more Division One schools will get on him. Uh, I think Navy and another one so far the are his options, but I think he's going to have um, some other looks. And I, but the thing that I liked about um, Gino and, and coming from a dad's perspective, and I know you're a dad too, that he's almost more proud of him of what he's done off the field. He's a really good student, and he said he's a good citizen. And I think most parents would rather have you know you, you, everybody dreams of having a really good athlete for a son or daughter, but I think in the big picture producing good human beings that are productive in life are more important as a parent, most parents. And so he, he was, he's proud of him, what he's done on the football field and that what he has a chance to do this year with West, but also very proud of maybe more proud of the young man. He's become very, very good person from by all accounts. Tell me what you think of this, uh, this matchup with Bentonville West and Fayetteville. What do you see happening here? Before the season started, I kind of, I, last year I picked Fayetteville as a team that I thought was one that people were sleeping on. And then lo and behold, they made me look really good. Bentonville West is kind of the team that I adopted this year in that role. I still feel pretty strongly about them. Um, I think that, that with guys like Bell and, and, uh, quarterback Jake Casey, who was very good as a junior, Brayden Jones, who's a, you know, a Swiss Army knife. He returns kicks. He's a running back. He's a, a linebacker, uh, very, one of the more versatile players in the state. I like them, and I think they are a good team. One thing that I probably undersold a little bit was Fayetteville. Uh, I think that Casey Dick has done a great job of, you know, you lose Bladen Fike, and you lose Isaiah Satania, the better passing duo in the state. You lose those guys, but then you plug in Drake Lindsay, who, by the way, was listed at SB Lives National, one of like 20 kids that have flown under the radar, you know, that have been a surprising performance. They, he made that list it's nationwide, all the, the markets of SB Lives. So he made that. He, he's been phenomenal. So I guess what I'm saying is 
that I think that Fayetteville has exceeded my expectations. And now going into that ball game, you probably would have them as a favorite. I, I still like Ben West. I think this is a big game for them. If they are a contender, I, I think they have to win this game. I, I think you know they play Bentonville, the rival, at the very end of the year. And I envisioned at the beginning that they would be playing them for a conference championship. But the way Fayetteville is playing, I think that could be them. And so uh, this this is a big game. This is, this is going to be one that the winner is a step closer to – to contending for a conference championship because I think the 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 schools that are in that mix is only probably about three and I think it'd be West Bentonville and Fayetteville I don't know that you know Rogers may have something to say about that you know too they've, they've got off to a good start but I'm I'm still not sold that they're a conference championship contender so uh, it this is going to be an interesting game I think Bentonville West got to play really well and uh, it's on the road. And we'll find out, I think, Friday if, if they're for real or not. Well, certainly uh, Northside found out Fayetteville's real. I took them to the house yes, uh, last weekend, 42-21. to 21. Now Northside gets your number one team in the state, Bryant. And they were off last week. Yeah, and Bryant only played twice because their game in Texas, well, game with a Texas school in Louisiana. Denton uh, was was canceled because of weather a few weeks ago. So they've only got two games. Looking at Northside first, something I think is real interesting about them. They they beat Southside. They had Greenwood dead to right. The game was over. And Greenwood being Greenwood pulled off one of the most epic comebacks in their history of the school and did it with a freshman quarterback for the most part. And I don't know if uh, Northside ever got got over that. I don't think they. I don't know if they've gotten over it. You know, playing Fayetteville, a really good team. Maybe things are different if they win that game. If they had it, they had it where they were, you know, decisively on top. And so you kind of wonder if that game, if that ends with them in a blowout win, does that make a difference against Fayetteville? I, I don't know, but it really seems like the momentum was just yanked away from them and then came out against Fayetteville and did not play well. Um, I like Pum Savoy, great quarterback, and he's, he's come on. He's another guy that could be one of those under-the-radar players that, you know, we may not have known what to expect, but he's, he's filled in well for Walker Gustavus, and they've got R.J. Lester, who's a really good cornerback that's going to Kansas State. They, they have good talent there, and I think that Northside is a team that I kind of wondered about maybe taking the place of North Little Rock in this uh, 7A Central with North Little Rock kind of experiencing some kind of issues early on, but then they bounced back and beat Parkview, uh, which is a top 10 team in our ranking. So I don't make North Little Rock maybe, maybe well now, but uh, Northside has the talent. They have the talent to stay with some of these better teams. The problem is Brian is just loaded. And, and I see it at the eighth grade level with my son, these guys, how good they are. And they, they just, by the time they're sophomores, they're ready to play. Um, There's so many good athletes. And Brian's got a sophomore in Jordan Walker. He's a starting quarterback. Uh, he he took over. Um, he and Gideon Mose were fighting for the job. Gideon is a Arkansas baseball uh, commit, a junior. And he, he had a, a shoulder injury in the final scrimmage or the benefit game. And he's still not active as far as we know and, and not sure what his status is for the rest of the season. But Walker's very good as a sophomore, poised and composed. Their defense is very good. And this is their first home game of the year. I think Northside's kind of going into a hornet's nest. But they played them really tough last year. They were one of the one teams that could match up with them athletically along with North Little Rocks. And they took the game into the fourth quarter. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was a close game. But I think Northside has to get over a little bit of the hangover of the last two games and, and get right with themselves and be ready to play in this game. Nate, you mentioned uh, Greenwood a minute ago, and they've got a they've got a matchup with the Pointers of Van Buren this week. This week, how do you see that one going? Greenwood will would be the the favorite in this, but Van Buren is a different team with Malachi Henry. He he missed the first two games. He comes back last week. And they rolled over Greenbrier forty to fourteen. He tied the uh, school record for career touchdowns. 
He helps them on defense, too. He's a real difference maker. I think pound for pound, one of the better players in the state, and you pair him with Bryce Perkins, who is a really good quarterback. Uh, you've got a good dynamic duo there. And, uh, you know, an offense that can do some damage, even in the 6A West. I, I think it could be kind of a high-scoring affair, but in the end, I think Greenwood, like a lot of other teams, are going to be too much for them. Um, they've got Hunter Houston, uh, and we, we've talked about Kane Archer, and, and rightfully so. He's probably the best freshman in the country, uh, but he's not getting a chance to play as much as he'd probably like to because Hunter Houston has been healthy. He's passed for almost 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. He's done a nice job. I mean, he's the incumbent. He threw for 3,000 last year. Uh, he's the starter. He's the senior. He's played that part so far. Um, they haven't had, you know, a huge game yet. Um, those are coming here in the West, but uh, I, I think I think Greenwood wins this game pretty handily. But I think Van Buren can put up some points, and I think Van Buren with a with a healthy Kai Henry maybe puts a scare into somebody in the West, whether it be PA or Little Rock Christian or Lake Hamilton. Lake Hamilton's one that could possibly, even though they handle Little Rock Christian pretty good. That that West is brutal. It's really brutal, but. I like Van Buren's offense, and I think they're going to put up some points. Line is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, 50. That's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, 5-0. Bet online, where the game starts.